living is living. <clears throat> That's why I'm here today. And my message is all packaged in this small bundle of unbelievable cuteness. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Joe Gallagher. <clears throat> Joe, an adult with Down syndrome, changed my life <clears throat> and has positively affected many others. Throughout my talk, I will hit on the three major points of why given is living. But first, I'll explain how I was chosen by Joe. Our story starts in November of 1994. Let me set the stage. At age 22, I take a job at a sheltered workshop. I did so out of necessity, not necessarily desire. I was working afternoons at TV27, our local CBS affiliate, and needed to produce some income out of my mornings. I have a cousin with Down syndrome and grew up across the street from a friend with developmental disabilities. So I thought, I got this, I can do it. Anyway, on my first day of work at the sheltered workshop, actually my first task of the first day, I met Mr. Joe Gallagher. I was on bus duty. I was to help a Mr. Walter Brown, another friend with Down syndrome, to deboard the bus and usher him to his proper seat on the workshop floor. However, as I was searching for Walter, a cute little man stood staring wide-eyed at me. Only about four foot six inches tall, he gazed up at me and smiled, a toothless, dazzling smile. His eyes even smiled at me. Joe looked at me as if I was personally sent to him to grant all of his wishes. He immediately thought that I was the greatest thing ever. I have no idea why I was chosen, but I needed Joe that first week. I quickly discovered that I wasn't very good at my job. I couldn't keep Walter Brown out of the nurse's station or Bradley Huffman from hanging out in the front hall. Initially, no one liked me or listened to me except Joe. It always seemed like he was staring at me and smiling. I wanted to quit, but I suffered from a lack of courage. I wasn't too good at my job, and again, no one liked me much. I should just go to my boss and leave. I thought about doing it <clears throat> after day one, but I chickened out. I even practiced it in my beat-up 86 Chevy Cavalier on my way to work on that second day. I, again, I saw how badly, though, <clears throat> the folks needed help. And Joe kept right on smiling at me. Even though I wanted to quit that each day at that first week, Joe's attitude and smile seemed to soothe me. So I stayed. My job evolved, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and bigger problems became evident. My parents of my new friends said, we got way bigger problems. I don't even want to talk about what's going on at the workshop. I haven't been on a vacation in 20 years. I'd love to go on a vacation, but my son or daughter won't get on an airplane. Another thing was, well, even if I schedule a vacation, who's going to watch my son or daughter for two weeks while I'm gone? And even more important, I'm in my 80s. My son or daughter with disabilities is an only child. I go to bed every night worrying what's going to happen to them when I die. Pretty significant stuff. Joe Gallagher's family was going through the same thing. At 50, Joe had brothers in, his late, in their late 70s. And get this, Joe's brothers, Dick and Frank, although Joe affectionately called Frank Cella, so Dick and Cella, each kept Joe for two weeks at a time. That's right, every two weeks for 21 years, Joe would switch from Dick's house to Cella's house every other Sunday. Joe finally started to rebel. There was crying and gnashing of teeth on every other Sunday night. Well, no, no gnashing of Joe's teeth. He didn't have any teeth. But there was a big scene every transition Sunday. So what did I do? I quit the workshop to tackle bigger problems. I was 25 years old, unmarried, not much responsibility. I took my retirement money from PERS, borrowed some cash from my pop, and bought a house in Nebo, which is in the north end of Struthers. Went back to YSU, picked up a license through the state, and here is where the story really starts to rock and roll. I petitioned the county for a client to live at my Struthers home. The county says, all right, Sutman, we know your relationship with the Gallaghers. We'll give you Joe Gallagher, but not just Joe. We'll give you Richard, too. Richard? Turns out Richard is six foot three, an adult with disabilities in a wheelchair that needs total care in the bathroom and with toileting. Oh, my. So it came to pass that on the day after Labor Day, 1999, I woke Joe and Richard up early, packed them the most beautiful sandwiches you could think of, thermoses filled with soup, spit shined them both in eager anticipation of the sheltered workshop bus at 7 a.m. Here's the view from the ramp, imagining the bus pulling up. And as I stood there, and it wasn't as gloomy as this picture shows, it was a nice late summer day, I could hear the bus before we could see it. And as it was coming up, I heard this noise coming from the bus. 
Um, I'm thinking to myself, there really must be something nice going on there. It sounds like they're cheering. And as the bus pulled up closer, I realized they were cheering for me. Remember, I had worked at the sheltered workshop. I had left. They hadn't seen me in a while, so they knew me. But just on sight, the whole bus started cheering and banging on the windows. They were excited to see me. So the bus aide come, came down, and we helped get Richard on the wheelchair lift. And I, you know, hand in hand, walked Joe up the steps. And as I got to the top of the steps, I hammed it up and pretended like I was going to steal the bus, and they cheered even louder. But as that bus pulled away, I thought, I am not really great at anything. No specific major talents, none. But that group of people just cheered for me early on a random Tuesday morning. Maybe, just maybe, my major talent is kindness. Maybe, just maybe, I can strive to be the kindest person in the world, or at least Struthers. Now we live in downtown Youngstown, so I strive to be the kindest person in downtown Youngstown. Maybe you have it already in you. Maybe your major hidden talent is kindness. That is point one of given is living. The kindness is already there in you. Take it a step further. Foster it. Joe is kind to me, a raw, wild type of kindness. I tried to return it. Our volley created something much bigger than ourselves. Author Jean Venet, himself the creator of Les Arches, Communities for Individuals with Disabilities, says that we need to embrace those on the fringes of society. The types of folks on the fringes of society are often the homeless, the mentally ill, med medically fragile, and the developmentally disabled. I wholeheartedly concur with this. We need to go the distance and embrace those on the fringes of society. So point number one, the kindness is already there. Take it a step further. Time for point number two of given is living. Everything is strange, nothing is strange. Let me tell you about my friend Todd Mitchell. Todd suffered from a rare cephalic disorder which left his head typically sized and his body very, very small. He had no use of his arms. He would use his toes to write, draw, and paint. And there's a picture that he drew of me with his toes. Imagine, again, a man with very little history of, or education on diseases, me, gazing at Todd for the first time. And like all great employers, no one told me anything about this or what to expect, so I kind of just walked in on it. His appearance was extremely strange. Todd was so medically fragile that he could not attend the sheltered workshop. I would visit him in his home on the Lower South Side and bring him art supplies and just talk. Yes, he looked strange, very strange, but our kindness and friendship wiped it all away. Between us, nothing seems strange anymore. Everything is strange, nothing is strange. The aforementioned Jean Venier believes that tenderness is the opposite to violence. The opposite of violence is not nonviolence, it is tenderness. When a mother is holding her child tenderly, that is a revelation. It means you are important, but it's also security. So tenderness is to show we have mutual trust. You don't have to protect yourself. If you're in a world where tenderness is important, you can bring down your own barriers and protection. So it's a place of protection and revelation through tenderness. So this tenderness to one another can turn the strange into beauty as we march through our lives. It helps us to get through the tough times that plague us in this fast-paced world. I want to read you a poem now from one of my favorites, Donald Hall. Here is his poem, Coffee Cup. The newspaper, the coffee cup, the dog's impatience for his morning walk, these fibers braid the ordinary mystery. After the marriage of lovers, the children came in the school bus that stopped to pick up the children. And the expected death of the retired mailman, Anthony Cat Middleton, who drove the school bus for a whole school year a persistence enduring forever in the soul of little Marilyn, who was six years old that year. We dug a hole for him. When his widow Florence sold the cape and moved to town to live near her daughter, the Mayflower van was substantial and unearthly. Neither lymphoma nor a brown and white cardigan 20 years old made an exception. Not elbows nor Chevrolets nor hills cutting blue shapes on blue sky. Not Maple Street nor Maine. Not a pink striped canopy on an ice cream store, not grass. It was ordinary that on the day of Kat's funeral, the school bus arrived, driven by a woman called Mrs. Eck, freckled and thin, wearing a white bandana and overalls with one eye blue and the other gray. Everything is strange, nothing is strange. Yarn, the moon, gray hair in a bun, New Hampshire putting on socks. What a sobering poem, 
Turn the strange into beautiful. Observe carefully and record the minute, the trivial. Give kindness and tenderness all the day through. Joe Gallagher taught me to pay attention to the little things. Frank Sinatra, TV guides, ironing, ice cream sandwiches, falling leaves, 45 RPM records, given his living. Let me tell you about Jeff Mandel very quickly. Uh, my good friend Jeff is on the autism spectrum, and he's actually a savant. Jeff can tell you the capital of any country in the whole entire world. He's great to have at cocktail parties. <laughs> One of my pleasures in my life is taking Jeff to his medical appointments. And uh, another thing about Jeff is he always feels he has to introduce himself to everybody in the room. So this room would totally make him mad. He'd have to introduce himself to everybody here. Well, it's particularly unnerving in a doctor's office, a waiting room. You're there, and Jeff is going to introduce himself to people who are sometimes sick. And um, I'll set the stage. We're there one day, the first lady to his left. Another thing about Jeff is he rocks back and forth all the time. So imagine him rocking in a chair there, even though it's not a rocking chair. Goes to the first lady, hi. Thankfully, she acknowledged him. He just wants acknowledgement. She kind of just said, hello. Second person, hi. Gave a head bob. Okay, again, acknowledgement. Third person gave a little wave. I knew the fourth person was going to be a problem. There was a gentleman who had a newspaper up, and he had been watching, but I could tell he was going to be stoic and not say hello. Jeff leans forward. Hi. No response. Jeff looks at me. Hi. Guy's not going to say anything. Now the attention of everybody in there is watching the drama unfold. Finally, hi. No response. And Jeff looks at me and says, Aw, oh, poor guy, he's deaf. <laughs> Everything is strange, nothing is strange. My dear audience, our third and final component of giving is living is the only true path to happiness is through the giving of yourself fully. We recently conducted a fishing derby with adults with disabilities at our farm. These are difficult to conduct. You basically need one volunteer for each fisher person. It was successful because the volunteers had to be attentive and work. But not only did they have to give assistance to the adults with disabilities, they had to give up some of their selves. They had to answer questions, solve problems, tell stories to the adults to keep them on task and make them feel comfortable. Award-winning novelist Isabel Allende lost her adult child, Paula, as she died in her arms in 1992. During her time of grieving, Allende had an epiphany. The pain of losing my child was a cleansing experience. I had to throw overboard all excess baggage and keep only what is essential. Because of Paula, I don't cling to anything anymore. Now I like to give much more than to receive. I am happier when I love than when I am loved. I adore my husband, my son, my grandchildren, my mother, my dog, and frankly, I don't even know if they like me. But who cares? Loving them is my joy. Give, give, give. What is the point of having experience, knowledge, or talent if I don't give it away? of having stories if I don't tell them to others, of having wealth if I don't share it. I don't intend to be cremated with any of it. It is in giving that I connect with others, with the world, and with the divine. So friends, given is living. There are three components of given is living. Number one, your hidden talent is kindness. You already have it. Number two, everything is strange, nothing is strange. Number three, give not just kindness, but give of yourself. Joe Gallagher is now deceased. It was three years in November that he passed away. My friend, my mentor, my inspiration in many ways is gone, just like Isabella Ande's daughter. But through giving his living, I do feel the spirit of Joe inside me. I will leave you with a paragraph from Joe's obituary. Joe loved music and cherished his record collection. He often enjoyed the musical artistry of Lawrence Welk, Frank Yankovic, Elvis Presley, and Perry Como. Joe prayed daily for his beloved Cleveland Indians, especially Satchel Paige and Mike Garcia. He was an avid fan of transistor radios and a hound for vanilla ice cream. He loved riding his bike and ironing clothes. He loved to swim and bowl. His favorite film was The Wizard of Oz. Joe is known to often shave several times a day and took great pride in his appearance. He was quite fond of Dr. Pepper. Joe very much subscribed to giving his living. The little man with the big smile continues to change me. And because of Joe, he's influenced me and others to run over 20 supported living homes, five-day programs, two candy stores, a restaurant, a radio station, and a not-for-profit. So thank you, Joe, giving his living.